You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. Each week, we'll take a deep dive into the world of volatility with in-depth analysis, trading activity reviews, strategy breakdowns, cutting-edge education, and much more. We'll also bring you exclusive conversations with the traders, researchers, and asset managers who are reshaping the volatility landscape. If it involves volatility, then you'll find it on Volatility Views. Volatility Views is brought to you by Myax, one of the fastest, most efficient trading platforms in the world. Myax is proud to bring you Spikes Volatility Products. Spikes options and futures are traded on the Spikes Volatility Index, Spike, offering pinpoint accuracy, radically faster dissemination, and a highly transparent settlement auction, all for ultra-low exchange fees. It's volatility reimagined. Learn more about spikes at myaxoptions.com slash spikes. Options and futures involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. The statements made are provided for informational purposes only and should not be relied on for financial or legal advice. And now, it's time to take a deep dive into the world of volatility. It's time for Volatility Views. All right, everybody, welcome back to Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. Kicking off this first session, first show here of the mad new year that is 2022. By the way, this January also marks the 15th, 1-5, it's insanity, 15-year anniversary of the launch of the network. We were playing around with stuff even before that into 2006, but the network officially launched the first ever options podcast launched way back in the primordial ooze days of January, 2007 pre iPhone iTunes was pretty much a shadow of what it is today. You had to have an RSS reader to get it. It was pretty hardcore. I remember going to see a lot of uh, large firms when we were first launching, explaining what we were doing and they got, Things like online and email and banners and newsletter, all those things. And I would say, and we have a podcast, and they would look at me like I was an insane person. And I would say, you understand radio, right? And they would say, yes. And so hence the name Options Insider Radio Network, which has stuck ever since. And of course, we would leave the meeting, and then someone would invariably come up to me. Usually, it was the IT guy at brokerage firm X or Exchange Y, and they say, hey, I love your podcast. And I was like, oh, okay, that's who gets it. Because those are the people who were tech savvy enough to get them back then because they had to have RSS readers and everything else. A far cry from what it is today where everybody knows what a podcast is. But we've been doing this for quite some time. Glad to see so many of you have been joining us over the course of these tumultuous couple of years here, 2020 and 2021. Let's hope 2022 is an interesting trading year, but perhaps not as insane of a societal year for all of us out there. All right, and joining me on the program today to kick off the new year. It's only fitting because he helped me close out the year last year. He is the rockingest of lobsters, Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi from OptionPit.com. Mr. G, welcome back to Volatility Views for the first time in this new year, sir. It is a pleasure to be here, and I have to say I'm, I'm 
mercilessly ribbing Jim on the Skype chat. While trying to get I see you two going back and forth there because we are also joined in the Myax hot seat by Mr. Jim Carroll, the senior vice president and portfolio manager over there at Toroso Advisors. At least I think he's with us. You know, it wouldn't be a new year if one of our guests didn't have some technical problems. So let's see if he's there. Mr. Jim are you with us today? If so, welcome to Volatility Views for the new year that is 2022, sir. Can you hear me, Mark? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Oh, <laughs> Amazing. <goodness>. Amazing. <laughs> How many billions of dollars did they spend on Skype? Still still needs tweaking every now and then. But we got you here. The gang is all assembled. Before we dive into our review, we got some fun things to do. Jim, this is obviously your first time joining us this new year. Let's give you a chance to share with our audience your thoughts on what for you were some of the highlights and lowlights from a vol perspective of the insane year that was 2021, sir? Well, 2021 had no shortage of excitement in the volatility landscape, that's for sure. Um, we saw the VIX itself blow through 30 no fewer than four times during the year, um, and and certainly uh, at elevated levels, more often than that, the the average close for the VIX was just a hair under 20. I calculated 1966. What kind of year was that? That was back in the uh, hippie days. That was a crazy year. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I also calculated that the that the average realized vol, you know, on the same sort of. 21 trading day, 30 calendar day basis was about 12 and a half. So, you know, we were looking at a seven point spread between the average fixed close and the average realized, which I haven't gone back to look, but that seems pretty wide to me. Um, and then uh, to to bring the year to a close and usher in the new year, we had the hyperactivity at the end of November the post-Thanksgiving hoopla, uh, where we saw a record for the exchange-traded note that I love so dearly, VXX, that moved plus or minus more than 15% three days in a row at the end of November. So no shortage of uh, exciting things to see and hear and feel during 2021. And there were no shortage of exciting things that happened on volatility views over the course of the past year. So, gentlemen, are you ready? You both are in a rarefied place. You get to join me to help me look back on the top 10 episodes of 2021. Are you men ready? Is there a drum roll involved? There will be more than a drum roll. There will perhaps be a nice music bed, which will kick off right now. There it is can only be one song. It is our Ball Views theme. It's been the same theme since the beginning. This show running over a decade now, listen, which is, which is terrifying in and of itself. I remember when we cooked it up way back there with the Volex boys. <laughs> and Sibo got so mad at me that I would dare to launch a volatility program without them. But they, they dragged their feet. You snooze, you lose. The Volex folks were the first ones on. What a great series of shows we had with them, uh, with Don and Bob and all those guys bringing on just a legion of the best minds in the world of volatility. And we have continued that tradition ever since as we go around out there. Maybe Jim notwithstanding, but I, I'm just kidding. All right, let's get to it. Let's do it. Listen, I know you folks love it. I see the numbers. <laughs> you folks love when we count down on the past year. So it is that time. Let's look at your favorite, the top, the most popular episodes of Volatility Views from N, just completely unprecedented year that was 2021. All right, here we go. Number 10. And again, the reason why we do these shows, number 10, on our top 10 episodes of Volatility Views from last year. Again, 2021. Insane year. Number 10, episode 428, which was our 2020 Volatility Spectacular. So this one, actually kind of cheating, because it did come out on the last day of the previous year. The last That was our look back at 2020, at the end of 2020. But, you know, those shows bleed over. People keep downloading them throughout the... It doesn't have to be a show that came out this past year. It's just the most popular shows throughout the year. Like, look at our Options Bootcamp show 
I think our number three on that show for the year was our episode one. Way back in 2012, people were going back to basics. So it depends. Whatever the most popular is for the year. In this case, our 10th most popular episode was our 2020 Volatility Spectacular, Mr. Rock Lobster. Congratulations. It is your first appearance on our top 10 because you were hosting with me on that program. What say you, sir? Was it the number one show? It was number ten. It was it was in the top ten. It was number ten. Well, at least I at least I made it to the top ten. Uh, I, I'm not sure if the Vol listeners are if they can handle the the Vol man because you know he mostly just doesn't speak very much. It's a, he's, a, he's a cartoon. <laughs> he's a cartoon. What's a cartoon? Well, he did one or two shows with me last year. So spoiler alert: you may p- pop up again on, oh, on this baby. on this countdown. I'm just saying. Let's see if Jim can make it too. He had a couple appearances last year. Let's see if he can break into the top ten. Let us see as we go on. To number nine here. What I also like about the Vol Views and some of the other ones is that it is representative of our entire year out there. Some other shows are, are front loaded or back loaded, like Twifo, in terms of the popular shows. Option Block was kind of all over the place throughout the year, which I like. And Vol Views is keeping up that tradition as we're going here now to the middle of January. Hard to fault that. That was a crazy time. Episode 430, the strange inauguration, I think. As we uh, as we put it, string inauguration volatility, as we put it, plus vanishing Tesla puts. So it was a combo of all the madness in D.C., as well as everyone's favorite, of course, uh, Tesla talking about some of their crazy, crazy catastrophe puts that were going the way of the Dota. That was on January 15th of last year. Mr. Rock Lobster, your second appearance on the top 10, along with Tom Jark from Mayak. So you're two for two so far, Mr. Rock Lobster. What say you? I'm feeling large, and clearly the listeners understand quality when they hear it. Right, that's all I can say. Appreciate them. You think I you'll beat the meatball on this? We shall see. Uh, he, I don't know. He's tough. I think you made more. He made more total appearances. He probably has oh, you yeah. in volume. So we'll see, Jim. What do you think? You think you so far you're over two on this? You think you're going to be able to make it into the top ten, sir? I sure hope so. Otherwise, I'm going to have to just crawl off and not, 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 never come back. <laughs> it would be ignominious if we invited you on and you had no placement in here, but we shall see as we move on to number eight. Number eight, Volatility Views, 429, so staying in that same range of the early part of the year. It was January 8th, so obviously right after the madness of January 6th of last year. It was one of our first shows of the year, pretty much exactly a year ago. It was The Meatball and Mr. Shelly Brown. He hasn't been on in quite some time from my ex out there. It was called Just Buy Tesla and Bitcoin. <laughs> Which, again, that was advice that if you followed that and just did that throughout all of 2021, you were looking pretty good, especially through that first half of the year when Bitcoin was threatening crazy levels out there. We had a resurgence, not so much again right now. But that advice held true throughout most of the year. So, Mr. Andrew, unfortunately, you are not in this one. The meatball has one in his scorecard. But I think you're behind that advice. You love buying yourself Tesla and Bitcoin, sir. Well, you know, they are two of the uh, one of the most undervalued uh, financial uh, assets. Yes, the clearly. World. The P.E. on Bitcoin is way too low. <laughs> and that Tesla, I, I'm kind of waiting till the share price gets so expensive. They give you a car when you buy 100 shares. <laughs> one to one. You want a round lot or you want a Model 3? What do you want? Yeah, like 100, yeah, actually 100 shares, you should get a car because isn't that, that's 100 grand. So uh, yeah, yeah, I think you should get a car when you buy 100 shares. Actually, you're right. We are at that level now. So yeah, you can walk <laughs> in. They should, have, they should have a stock desk in the corner of every dealership. It's saying, hey, you know, uh, you want some stock or you want a car? Hint, the car is cheaper. <laughs> All right. There you go. That's number eight. Number seven. We're jumping around now to October 1st of this year, episode 466. It was Everyone Needs to Stop Hedging. <laughs> I remember that. That was the advice slash admonition of our guest, Mr. Jem Carson from Kai Volatility Advisors. We also had the meatball on that one. So that's two for two for the meatball. Jim, so far we've got uh, four here, and you're 0 for 4, sir. What say you? And also, what do you say to that advice that everyone needs to stop hedging because, as he was claiming on that episode, it just wasn't working and it's just bidding up the skew needlessly? Well, exactly. So, you know, stop the hedging. Just just buy the calls outright and uh, 
And I think you guys put me on the show today just so you could embarrass me by having me not appear in the top ten. <laughs> well, we'll see. We still got some time left. Maybe you're in the top half of the top ten, which is a, a feather in your cap. We had Mr. Rhodes on with me on Twifor yesterday, and he was very excited he took the third spot, so he said he got the bronze. Maybe you'll be a medalist, Jim. We shall see. Let's go back now to number six on our top ten here. Volatility Views, episode 35 from February 19th of last year. It was Bitcoin VIX and Yellow Snow. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what the heck the Yellow Snow part was about. I'll have to go back and listen to that show and decide. But clearly you folks liked it. I was joined on that episode by the Meatball as well as, oh, Mr. Rhodes. He'll be happy that he made an appearance on our top ten here. So we got two now looks like for the Meatball and two for the Rock Lobster and one for the Once in Future Dr. Vix. Mr. Rock Lobster, what say you? You are now tied with your nemesis in life, sir. I, I know. <laughs> I, you know, Russell always, he was, uh, when we have our, th- our, uh, uh, our, our live events in Chicago, we always had Russell speak. He always had something like good. You know, he digs into the deep, the deep geeky statistics of Vix and usually comes up with a, a good idea. So I, I, I don't mind sharing, I don't mind sharing some space with Russell. I have to say I don't have the good Dr. Vix. I don't mind it. I don't mind it at all. And he is official now. He got his doctorate finally. So he is. Oh, so now he wakes just the the once and future Dr. Vix is now actually. Yes. Dr. Vicks. He's the once and future and present Dr. Vix. Let's go to number five. Now we're out. Now we're getting to the top half. Now we're getting to the big boys. Let's see who can separate the wheat from the chaff here. Number five, Volatility Views 433. Uh, from February 5th of last year, can you squeeze the VIX? This, I remember this one. This was a fun one. This had the meatball, so now he's three versus two. Oh, and Dr. VIX again, once in future and present Dr. VIX out there. He's now two, so two for him, two for the Rock Lobster, three for the meatball, and zero for Jim, if we are counting a home out there. By the way, the title of this, Can You Squeeze the VIX? This was a hot topic. This was back when, obviously, stock squeezes were... All the rage yet again. Everyone was trying to squeeze everything. They were talking about going to squeeze school silver. Short squeezes were the rage. And people were out there actually talking about, oh, we could squeeze the VIX North. Not realizing it is not a overshorted equity that has no assets. The upside capacity in VIX is a different beast. And good luck trying to squeeze that one. So that was a fun conversation for that episode. Unfortunately, Jim, we're in the top five now. And uh, we have, like I said, three for the meatball, two for Mr. Once in Future Dr. Vicks, two for the Rock Lobster, and unfortunately not yet, Mr. Jim. Are, are you perhaps sorry that you came on the show now? <laughs> I'm almost always sorry when I come on. <laughs> oh, there we go. I'm glad we leave a good impression in your mouth afterwards. We'll see. We'll see if you can redeem yourself. You've got a few left here. We're getting to the big boys now. Top four, almost, as Mr. Rhodes said, to the medal stand. And number four from last year, episode 431. So again, a lot of these back in the early time frame, but not all of them. To planking volatility and short squeeze in GameStop. This is from January 22nd of last year. The guest was myself and the meatball and Tom Jark in the Myax hot seat. And our guest was Chris Sidiel from the Ambus Group out there. That was a fun one as well. Again, right in the midst of the kickoff of all this madness, GameStop was roaring to... Thousand volatility on the way to it, which, by the way, GameStop on the rampage again today. Not quite to those levels, but still uh, intriguing stuff out there. GameStop up, oh, it's only up nearly 5% now. So it was up to 160. It has given up a lot of that <laughs> since then. So it was up, I think, 30% or something along those lines early on in the session. So there we go. Uh, episode four no rock lobster and no gym, unfortunately. But a good one there, a good cadre of guests, a, a rare quartet on the show, and it looks like a lot of you enjoy that one as well. All right, now we're getting to the metal stand here. And number three on our top ten countdown for last year, listeners, Volatility Views 434, Volatility Market Pointing to a Tumultuous Year. It was from February 12th of last year. It was with the Rock Lobster, so ding, ding for you there, Mr. Rock Lobster. And our guest, none other than Jim Carroll from Toroso Advisors. So, Jim... Not only did you make it in the top 10, you made it to the medal stand. What say you, sir? Take a bow. I am, uh, I am taking a virtual bow. I wish everybody could see the pride beaming from my face. <laughs> I think it's, it's clear to say this is the apex of your volatility career, and it's kind of all downhill from here now, <laughs> sir. I'm sure that's true. 
whatever else you do in the world of volatility, you will always be known. On your tombstone, it will be carved. Reached number three. Got the bronze medal in the 2021 Volatility Views Countdown. So congratulations. It's not every day that you make a life-changing accomplishment, sir. Uh, I've, I've got to run off and tell my wife and kids. You should. You should. They can finally be proud of you, sir. It'll be a good time there. So there you go. And Mr. Rock Lobster, you're back in it at number three. So there you go. So now... I, I, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. I would mention, too, that uh, Chris Sedile is a very good follow on Twitter. He's an, he's an uber, uber geek, uber volatility. Yes, he, so he is pretty if active. you're into the heavy, into the heavy, heavy, he's very good. I saw him bemoaning the fact that we're no longer in the... Uh, the ape option buying madness of January. I think that probably is <laughs> once a decade. Uh, that kind of uh, that kind of madness, very reminiscent of the frothy uh, internet mania in ninety nine two thousand. Indeed, he is a good follow. Gets into all things about the variance market and everything else out there. So a fun one, and our number three episode for last year. What will make the top two? Let's find out. Number two, listeners. Going back to the end of the year, Volatility Views 476. This was a fun one, very recent, December 17th. It was the great Volatility Sumo match. Yes, I remember this one fondly. Once again, Jem Carson. So he's got two now from Kai Volatility Advisors. Uh, the Meatball and Matt McFarland from MyAx. So that's his first appearance on the list. So let's see here. We've got the Meatball with one, two, three, four, five on our top ten. We've got Andrew with one, two, three. It looks like three. Three so far. Three, five for the meatball. Three for Andrew. Two for Russell. Two for Jem Carson. And uh, one so far, but in the top three for Mr. Jim Carroll there. The great volatility. So, yeah, this was a fun one. I kept egging Sebastian and Jem on to have an actual sumo match <laughs> on the show. So clearly that resonated with a lot of you if you missed it from December 17th of last year. So there you go. Uh, almost, I should say, almost, Mr. Rock Lobster. One more for you. And then we get to the number one episode of last year, listeners. The, ones, the one that tickled your fancy the most, the one that you guys came back to, not just in January, but throughout the year and kept downloading. It was episode 432. The Great GameStop Volatility Epoch. I'm from January 29th of last year. It was myself and none other than the Rock Lobster. So, Mr. Rock Lobster, you didn't take the total spots, but you took the top spot. What say you, sir? I'm, I'm impressed because I, I think I probably only did like five or six shows last year. Ten, you know, because Mark, this is Mark's. He, lo- he loves his show. So, um, I, I'm, I'm as pleased as I I, I think I, uh, I feel like I slightly outperformed uh I, I outperform the index. I, I feel like a- Andrew. I would I would have to echo that. I would say that on an appearance adjusted basis, you and I are probably the top two. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with that. I'm just like a. It's like a, I mean the meatballs like a, on every week. Exactly. No, it's, exactly. You know, every week. But you know why? Because we're kind of like strange. You know, we're just we're we. They don't get us every week. We're just we're we're we feel more special that way. <laughs> You're a rare treat indeed. We need to have a new list, Jim. We need an appearance adjusted top ten. That's what we need. <laughs> That'll be on the well, next. Well, this is a this is a ball show. So weighted average should be like the A A T T will be coming out next week as we uh, as we see who the appearance adjusted <laughs> top cast. So, listeners, there you go. That's your top ten for the year, listeners. I hope you enjoyed it. I know you do because I see the numbers. You guys love that stuff. As we keep on rolling, it is time now to look to this year as we kick off our volatility. Review. It's time to break down the latest developments in the volatility trading world. It's time for the volatility review. All right, everybody, welcome to Volatility View. By the way, let me just point out, I am the only one to go 100% in the top 10. The only one on all those shows. So I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. Maybe there is a bit of a correlation out there. As we kick off our first mad week of, like, like I said at the top of the show, what is hopefully a fun and interesting trading year, but perhaps not as societally destructive as we've seen the last couple of years. 
out there. We want options volume. We want a little volume. We want stuff to trade. We don't need all the other stuff that usually is incumbent with it out there. But markets to end the first week of the year are mixed after kind of coming out of the gate hot, seeing names like Tesla and Ford having a great year in the first couple of days of the session out there. Now giving some of that back. Coming into showtime now, we are seeing a mixed mixed bag to end the week. Dow fighting to stay positive pretty much, up about a quarter of a percent right now. S&P was kind of middling most of the session. Now it's off about two-tenths of a percent. And NASDAQ off nearly three-quarters of a percent. We've seen the latter portion of the week, the tech-heavy NASDAQ, kind of coming under fire from the minutes of the Fed, pointing to perhaps the, the new regime not going to be too friendly to some of these high-valuation, high-flying names out there. When we kicked off the show, which was a while ago now, we had spikes at about a 1960. That's up about a little over two, about 2.1 points from last week. Uh, VIX Cash at about a 19 and a half. That's up nearly two points, about 1.9 points or so. Uh, VVIX getting a little frothy again, back up to 116. That's, it was threatening to go back down to the, the uh, double digits level. Didn't quite get there. And our old friend the Viking, a.k.a. V Spikes, at about a 152 and a quarter. That's up about eight and a quarter points from this time last year. Again, for your frame of reference, it topped out last year at about nearly 206 in December and hit a low of about 128 back in November. So we don't even have a full year under our belt yet for the Viking, but still, that's how it stands. And Mr. Jim, because you are our bronze medalist on the show, we'll have you go first, sir. What is lighting up your tape in this first crazy week of the new year, sir? So the first crazy week um, has been punctuated by, you know, the release of the Fed minutes on Wednesday and the uh, uh, cascading negative consequences on uh, equities and and the flip side being the cascading uplift in uh, in the vol space and i tweeted out uh something either that day i can't remember was it that day or the or the next morning basically saying uh please remember that contango in the volatility term structure is no guarantee that a short vol trade will be profitable and uh, pointed or paraphrased mike tyson everybody has a plan oh, looks like we lost him mid-sentence mr jim are you there i believe you were about to say everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face <laughs> which is a great quote from mike tyson you know a lot of people have said similar things generals throughout the years everyone has a plan until you engage the enemy on the battlefield front so there are many analogs to that out there in the vol space we'll get mr jim back meanwhile let's go around the horn mr rock lobster sir taking the top spot so a feather in your cap don't want to get your head too big but you had i should say a reasonable dare i say it even a respectable number of appearances in our top 10 so first off congratulations to you and then b what is lighting up the tape of vol man in this first week of the new year sir oh and i'm uh I'm, i owe it all to the listeners for uh putting up with my craggy, squeaky voice. Um, uh, this year, so I would say, I would echo Jim, like, so today is one of those days where, so I had, you know, I had little vol back spreads going and everything was like, okay, wow, well, we're down 2%. And I was I was wondering about Jim's comments on this. Mark, SPX down 2%, and I don't think VIX got above 20. Um, and I know there was, you know, there was that huge, uh, like Jim said, huge contango. So you had the... Uh, there was what I would call like, you know, cushion. The vol was in the futures, you know, at already priced pretty high. So there was a lot of, uh, again, these are all non-statistical terms, but like the futures kind of absorbed the cash as the front end of vol, uh, front end of SPX volatility comes up and um, the term structure flattens out a little bit. So, uh, and that like, okay, so, okay, NASDAQ is down what, 5% from the top or somewhere around there. And now SPX, we had a two percent down day, and VIX can't get above twenty. So it, it, I thought it would be more of a, you know, kind of an apocalypse for tech. I mean, it's down, but it seems people are taking their tech dollars and buying other stuff. It, it kind of like a big uh, rotation. Um, you know, oil had a huge run at the beginning of the year. It's still kind of going. More value stocks, banks, uh, maybe some of these poor leisure stocks that keep getting like, you know, uh, COVID on, COVID off, COVID on, COVID off. Um, so you're seeing that like that kind of activity. And now, like, you know, and I another thing I noticed, uh, 
this week was like the upside this crazy bit like vxx i, I wrote a post on this the feb 35 calls in vxx were 160 vol um now i know there's skew in the upside of all i apologize i had to buy some upside in vxx sir sometimes you got to do what you got to do <laughs> no, it was like, don't blame me so the, the after money call was two dollars and 40 cents and the 15 handle, 15 strike out of the money call was a dollar. So like, okay, I'll buy those call spreads and I'll figure out a way to pay for them. <laughs> Even if all goes to nothing. So um, the decay on that trade was positive. Like you could buy, you could buy a call spread in VXX. And even with VXX down, that call spread is up money <laughs> because the upside is coming. So um, I'm sure I'll figure out a way to make some money with them uh, at, at some point. but. It has the look of we had a very volatile December. I think the Omicron thing freaked people out. Uh, Jim, I know Jim is a numbers guy, but I'm seeing like 18 vol average for S&P 500 uh, realized vol, which is pretty high. Um, and I, I, you know, and I, I think that will be coming down, right? But with vol, you got to kind of wait to see that it comes down. Uh, because people aren't running in front of it, uh, the intended vol collapse like they used to by blasting away at options. Um, there's still some, but um, you know, not enough. Like vol, VIX is not down a whole lot today coming into a weekend, um, especially after being up the last couple of days, give or take. So I, I'm feeling we're going to have like a little vol fatigue where we're going to have like a higher VIX, higher 30 day vol, and then the front end of vols is going to get smashed. So, um, I, again, uh, just, just a guess, uh, but that's kind of the way it feels like it's going right now. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me if we had kind of a stair step down in vol. So when I make my, you know, vol prognostication for next week, my guess is it would be lower. Um, cause we just, you know, we're, we're not getting like that pounding sell off in the queues. Like, you know, I thought NVIDIA would be down like, you know, it's down 60 bucks from the high. So that's something, right? So they took they took a chunk out of it for sure, un, unquestionably. But, uh, you know, it was a $200 stock in October, uh, $204. So there's there's room to come out of these Q stocks. The big question is, is how, how aggressive will people be selling it? Um, and then the last thing is, you know, the Fed decided to get really tough, talk really tough, right? They're like the schoolyard bully, right? They talk really tough, and they end up not doing anything. <laughs> They're like, okay, we're going to raise really fast. That's probably what they should do, but are they going to, you know, you know, the jobs number wasn't great. They'll come up with another excuse. They're like, well, but we'll talk tough, and we'll raise rates, you know, in six months. So I don't think they're going to do a whole lot. Um, I, I Hopefully, they stop the bond buying and some of the other goofy stuff they do, but um, I don't think it's enough to I don't know if it's enough to crater the Q stocks. It's just it's amazingly resilient. And I still think there's a lot of money floating around in equities. Now, does it go away? It's a point. Sure. But at least for right now, from a vol point of view, it's not going to surprise me if the vol is a little lower and the market gets a little tired of a 19 VIX. But that's just that's my educated guess. Let's see if he has any more educated guests. Left in him, Mr. Jim, I do believe you're back with us, sir. You were in the middle of explaining how Mike Tyson had a plan until he got punched in the face, and then you were punched in the face and were gone, sir. So, Mr. Jim, uh, can you hear me, A, and B, if you have, want to finish the rest of your thought? Have at it. I'm back. Well, I'm, I'm having some technical difficulties on this end. But, uh, no, I, I, I listened to uh, what Andrew just talked through, and I, I'm of the same sentiment that, you know, obviously, this market and the indices have been driven by a handful of stocks that have uh, been selling off recently uh, in in some respect, at least due to uh, both the specter of the Fed raising rates and interest rates backing up by themselves, perhaps in anticipation of what the Fed's going to do. Um, if we can find some footing in those stocks, then the selling probably peters out. Uh, and that certainly should put some downward pressure on the VIX 
and and the whole volatility complex. The thing that's interesting to me is that the steepness of the uh, term structure uh, is sort of at, at has been at record levels, um, and the whether it's the out months on the VIX term structure, the, the futures term structure, or looking at you know the SIBO term structure six month and a year, uh, those levels just refuse to budge. So there's still a fear factor uh, going out six and 12 months, uh, the, the market is not prepared to give in and bring the whole term structure down, any downward pressures on the front end. It reminds me of the Thompson brothers and their mullet trade, short in the front and long in the back. Uh, so that may be what we're in for. Yes, the Thompson bros. They haven't been on in a while. Also, we're not in our top 10. I don't, I'm not sure if they were on the show last year. I'll have to go back and check. But yes, I do love their... Their mullet trade out there. Let's get to what's trading out there right now. Speaking of mullets, we're looking at the VIX futures. That is the trade they like to do it on. They like to do the shorting the front of the curve and have that party on the longer portion of the curve. Coming into showtime now, obviously, Deese has gone the way of the dodo on the VIX futures. Uh, The Jan future, when we kicked off the show, is up nearly a full point from our last show at the end of last year, about 09 and the Fab Future up about two-thirds of a point. Uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, anything catching your eye out there in the land of VIX Futures to kick off the new year, sir? Um, besides just, you know, kind of like the Contango still remaining uh, higher than average, by the way, uh, I measured an option pit. So, like, still pretty frothy. Like, the back month, uh, pretty frothy over what I would call, like, average levels of how the market just prices time on an average basis. So it's a little higher than normal, um, which has been a symbol of most of the COVID era, I might add, where we have stayed at kind of this higher vol with uh, higher time premiums and it hasn't and it hasn't gone away. So I would like to say that today is a whole lot different from yesterday and three weeks ago and five weeks ago and two months ago and whatever. But uh, until until we have kicked this COVID thin thing in the shins permanently, I still think this is a um, it's a feature of the market that a vol market that doesn't really go away. So what happens is I think you know shorter term they just take those vols down, um, but longer term there's not the natural selling of vol out there that there used to be um, that I think generates a steeper uh, vol curve, and that's kind of what we got until it's not here anymore. Um, so that is the very, that is my, uh, let's just get my back of the envelope eyeballing of what's going on with the vol futures. And Mr. Jim, I know you watch the vol futures a little bit. Anything catching your eye out there in the world of VIX futures, sir? Well, I, it, yeah, I'm, uh, echoing what Andrew said again, the, the out months are stuck at a very high level. That's creating this steepness in the term structure. And, um, you know, a lot of people look at that steep contango and say, well, everything is fine in the world and we should just short the hell out of it. Um, But sometimes (laughs) that steepness is really just telling you that um, insurance in the out months is remains expensive. People think that there are bad things that could happen and therefore uh, shorting the front end, you've got to be a little nimble and and be prepared to have that be a rocky road. Let's see if it's a rocky road out there in the vol options right now. Not a heck of a lot lighting up the tape spikes, uh, not putting up a lot of new OI, small trades changing hands. They're waiting for some of the big players to come back here on the new year. Obviously, a lot of the big OI expired at the end of last year. Going out to VIX, not that much going on out there either, quite frankly. In fact, as I mentioned, don't expect that ADV to hang around north of 700,000 for very long. And it didn't. It's back down now to 482. <laughs> Get this, listeners, down 176,000 in just the past week. So clearly not a lot going on, which, again, is not surprising, given that we're at the end of the year. This is seasonally not exactly the hot spot for Vol. There's a couple of periods throughout the year that are seasonally pretty boring. Usually, usually it's 
middle of summer and this time, at the end of the year, beginning of the year. Not so much the beginning of the year anymore because we've seen early January can hold a lot of surprises for us, but definitely towards the end of the year. About 192,000 contracts on the tape as of a few minutes ago. Like I said, the ADB down to 482. Cost you about 101,000 contracts to break into the top 10 in VIX right now, so kind of light out there. Let's do a quick top 10. By the way, let's see, one, two, three, four. Yeah, we're at 50-50 exactly puts over calls, so a little bit of an evolution out there in the top 10. Is that perhaps showing a bit of a change of sentiment? We shall see. Well, number 10, like I said, the Jan 50s, 101,000 of those. Number 9, 103 of the Jan 17 puts. Number 8, a buck 04 of the Jan 20 puts. Number 7, 105,000 of the Jan 60 calls. 60. Interesting. Maybe some guy was buying all those uh, BXX 35s, also buying the Jan 60s. Either way, number 6, 106,000 of the Jan 25 calls. Number 5, a buck 10 of the Feb. 17 puts the first and only Feb on this list. Everything else is January. Number four, buck 15 of the Jan 70s. Oh, intriguing. The plot thickens. Number three, 116,000 of the Jan 40s, the comparatively reasonable Jan 40s. Number two, 187,000 of the Jan 19 puts. And number one with a decent, but not that big bullet, really. It's not even 200,000 of the Jan 18 puts. Looking out there this week. Not a lot really lighting it up this week. The busiest days were Wednesday with 488,000. Uh, the most active contract on Wednesday was 67,000 of the Jan 18 puts, followed by 37,000 of the Jan 22 puts. The rest was kind of light. And Monday had 445,000. Monday, obviously, the first trading day of the new year. The most active contract on Monday, about 24,000 of the Jan 16 puts, and then about 23,000 of the Jan 19 puts. Though worth noting, there were 18,000 of the Feb 25 calls also going up. So someone perhaps getting a little bit of upside love all the way through February. I have to go look and see what they paid for those bad boys. Intriguing stuff. Let's see if VXX is also intriguing listeners here. As we kicked off the show, it was about, about a 1920. It's up about three quarters of a point. I'm sure it's probably given some of that back as we've been talking here on the show. Yeah, it's about at about a 19 handle right now, a little bit below the 19 handle again. So far, about 175,000 contracts on the tape in VXX. So a decent day. The ADV. Also coming off quite a bit, down to 266. That's down 40,000 contracts just from last week. So again, last week, not exactly a rock'em, sock'em robots time for the vol market. Uh, 6040 puts to calls in the top 10 in VXX, which is along the lines of what you'd expect, if not more, put heavy out there. Let's just do a quick top five because we have some other stuff to get to at the end of the show, which is always fun. Number five, 17, almost 18,000 of the Jan 25s. Number four, 18,000. Of the Oh, we still have a VXX1 pre-split adjusted contract in the top 10 here. Number four, it's the Jan 12 puts going out to this month, so those will be gone pretty soon. Number three, 18,600 of the Jan 17 puts. Number two, our final call in the top 10, the 21,000 of the Jan 30s, and rounding out the top 10 in VXX this week, or really the top five right now, 31,600 of the Jan 22 puts. Let's go on out to UVXY. It was at about a 13 when we kicked off the show. Again, I'm sure that one has given up some of the ghost as well. That was up about half a point, and it's down about 12.85, 12.75 now, so up about a quarter of a point from our last show. We're seeing the ADVs, about 189,000 out there, down about 18,000 from our last show, and today about 120,000 contracts on the tape. Let's just do a top couple of positions because we got to get rolling here. Number two, about 15,000 of the Jan 12 puts, and number one, 15,400 of the Jan 10 puts. It's If you're wondering, it's about 70-30, calls over puts which is, again, kind of surprising. It has been call-heavy. It was 80-20 last week. So calls have been outpacing puts in UVXY for a while. If you know anything about that product, it's not exactly the way that thing trades. So unless folks are shorting those to high heaven, which is certainly possible, it is intriguing to see a lot of calls going up out there in UVXY. Earnings vol, earnings season kicking off again with Walgreens Boots Alliance and all that fun. We'll save that for a later show, perhaps with uh, Mr. Matt from ORATS to get him to break down the coming earnings season, the Oracle of New Hampshire. But listeners, we have to get to it now. It's a fun one. It's time for an epic crystal ball. It's time to peer into the future and reveal what the volatility gods hold in store. It's time to look into the crystal ball. All right, everybody, let's do it. Our first crystal ball of the new year. That means, listeners, first, we have to pay off what we did last year before we go way out into the future. 
<laughs> so first off, last year, listeners, at the, at the end of, well, actually, la- end of 2020, we asked you to come out and prognosticate, to join us in the game, to pick where you think VIX will close at the end of this past year, 2021, where you thought it would close. We gave you different ranges, which is always fun to see how the ranges have crept up over the past couple of years. What we gave you at the end of 2020 for 2021 was what we would consider normal. You know, low range, 8 to about 12. Normal range, about 12 to 17. Elevated, a nice wide one. We gave you six points, which maybe is the reason somebody picked it. 17 to 23, and then the quote-unquote pandemic range north of 23. And you folks chose last year, end of 2020, actually. You chose VIX was going to close for 2021 in the elevated range, which it just barely did. 40.4% of you chose that range. The closing print for VIX on the new year was, I believe, 1754. So just at the low end of that range, 31.9% of you said the normal range of 12 to 1699. The pandemic range got 19.1%, so north of 23. We were there for quite a bit of the year, but not at the end of the year. And the low range, 8 to 1199, which we never touched, 8.5%. We had a lot of you guys coming in with some specific guesses last year. We know we like to play this game. If you come close, you win a fabulous prize. Our buddy, Mr. Neil Wales, has done pretty good on this in the past. He guessed inerringly precise levels for the close of VIX a couple of times in a row. He was back on it for last year at 1375. So he was predicting a much lower ball level. Unfortunately, we did not get there, Neil. Uh, so no joy for there. Jay was at 4340, was at 1215. A bunch of other people had... Lower teen hand. I didn't see many 17s in there, really. At, I don't think any at all. So, unfortunately, there were some, a lot of people in the 20s, a lot of people in the lower teens. There was no one not that close, really, to where we actually closed, which was about 17 and a half. So, unfortunately, no joy, no winner, winner, chicken dinner for you folks out there, listeners, from the prognostication. By the way, Mr. Rock Lobster, you predicted last year at the end of 2024, 2021, you predicted we would close the year not in Zone 4, which was correct. You predicted also a return to normalcy, as you said, and that we would close the year in Zone 2, which for our our purposes was 12 to 16.99. So you were right outside the range, sir. What say you to your epic failure? Shame. Shame <laughs> upon you, sir. I was, I was uh, two handles out. Um, but I was right at the beginning of the week, I thought. <laughs> we, I was close. I was, yeah. I have to say, though, but I, you we were close until you weren't. Lower half. We are not in the lower half. If it was guess like mid December vol, you were right on the money, sir. But uh, <laughs> unfortunately, that is not the, the game screwed me. we they were playing. Me. Of course, you weren't as bad as your buddy, the meatball. He predicted a VIX of 12 at the end oh. of the year, oh. which did oh. not come to pass. And Uncle Mike thought VIX of 11.21. Oh. And uh, so he is far out I there. I have bragging rights then. I'm way closer. Than those Unfortunately, two. Mr. Jim, I don't have any record of what your prognostication is. So you could say you were at 17 and a half and you were, you were a genius, sir. We'll allow it <laughs> for the purposes of this show. So that's where. 1722, I think. Oh, okay. So I mean, that's probably sounds more like you out there, I think. All right. So that's what we had for the prediction bucket. I don't I'll have to look up mine because I don't want to not hold my feet to the fire either, listener. So I'll have to go find what mine is. I was so busy getting everyone else's, I have to get mine. So we'll have to see what I prognosticate. I know I picked what range I picked, and I'm pretty sure I picked the uh, the elevated range, which is where we closed. So that worked out pretty well, even though it was close. But I don't know my, I'll have to find my exact VIX pick so we can get my, my number in there as well. And in terms of this actual week, where we are right now, the, let's see, the, we are actually, Spike's at about a 19 and a half as we're winding down the show. And let's see, VIX Cash, where are you, my friend? A little bit north of the 19 hand, about little, almost 19 and a quarter out there right now. So I was feeling less. I was saying 1685. And the Rock Lobster was feeling 17 half. So no joy for either of us there. We are multiple handles away. A lot of our listeners were all over. Nichols was all right. He was at an 18. So he was closer than us, but not much closer. I don't see anybody else who uh, was even uh, Luigi trying to scum me at 1675. I don't know what he's doing there trying to come in so close to me. But unfortunately, it did not work out out there, even though he already won his great prize. Let's see what else we had. 17, 18 quarter. Yeah, and I don't see any. Um, we had a whole bunch of other ones. These are the closest that our producers put in here. And 1490, <laughs> not going to do it for this week out there. So no joy this week. So let's, gentlemen, prepare yourselves 
because we have a double, double prognostication for us in front of us. First off, we have our poll raging right now as we speak out there, hot and heavy, our question of the week. We're asking that question again. We say it's a new year, so it's time to look ahead to the end of 2022. Quite simply, where will VIX close at the end of 2022? And I, I noticed our ranges have ticked up a little bit. And it didn't even occur to me. That just shows how much vol we've become used to and inured to over the course of the last couple of years. Because our same ranges from not that long ago have ticked up. Now we say quiet is below 15, which in a normal year would sound crazy. Uh, frothy, 15 to about 20. Uh, elevated, 20 to about 25. And then very elevated, north of 25. So that's ticked up about two points. We used to say the pandemic level was north of 23, but that's where we're hanging out now, listeners. A bunch of you have chimed in. So, Jim, we'll start with you. If you have a vote, first off, where you, what are you feeling for this time next week for your ball prediction? B, where do you vote in our poll? And then C, what is your precise VIX prediction for the end of next year? A, a triple whammy, sir, if you dare. <laughs> wow. Okay. So for next Friday, uh, I'm in this range that we've established in the first few days of the new year. I'm I'm saying 1750 for next Friday. Writing that down here. All right. There we go. Next week. We'll see. We'll okay. see. Okay. End of end of 2022. First, the bucket. Um, I'm going in the elevated bucket, so 20 to 24.99, and hmm. my point estimate will be 23.20. 23.20 to end the year. Wow. Yes, sir. Jim's feeling a, a resurgence of some vol out there. Interesting. End of year, 23.20 for Mr. Jim. Wow. And I was talking you know, kicking off in March with the Fed and tapering, maybe seeing some vol, some corrections kick in. Sounds like you're thinking that carries through the entirety of the year. Interesting stuff, Mr. Jim. But, hey, who am I to argue with our bronze medalist from 2021 here? So uh, well (laughs) done there. Let's go on out now to the Rock Lobster, who holds the gold. Not for most appearances in the top ten, but he took the top spot. So congratulations to him. Mr. Rock Lobster, same questions for you, a trifecta. First off, where are we going to be next week? our normal game, and then B, what bucket are you in for our poll? And then C, what is your exact prognostication? Um, let's see. So for next week, I'm I'm going to go 17-10, a little lower than Jim. A little lower than Jim. Not a scum lower, but a little lower. I Just because we don't sell. I mean, <laughs> we're not selling those Q stocks. Um, uh, for, I would say, the bucket for the following year, I'm going to stick to my... 12 to 16 bucket, I believe. That was the uh, bucket I had before. Not zone one, but zone two. Um, and my number is going to be 1385. My goodness. Wow, we already have almost a 10-point range in our markets. Just, that's what makes <laughs> a market, a listeners. Drive a truck through it, baby. That's what makes a market, <laughs> listen. Well, I like it. Listeners, get your prognostications in there as well. All right. And, of course, I shall do mine before we roll out of here next week. For next week, I'm feeling a little bit less vol than now, but a little bit more than my compatriots out here are feeling. By the way, we need to tally up the crystal ball rankings. I do believe I think I took the top spot in that last year, but I I don't know. I'll have to crunch the numbers to make sure. Who knows? Maybe maybe the Rock Lobster or maybe the Meatball or someone else made us. Or maybe we'll have the category of guest because... No one prepared enough to compete that much. So maybe the guests took it last year. We'll have to crunch the numbers and find out. But I'm at an 1835 for this time next week. Uh, let's go. Oh, the rock. I put the Rock Lobster's pick in mine. I don't want that anywhere near my pick, that 1385. There we go. That's his for the end of the year. All right. And then for myself, for the buckets, I'm going to have to fall into the range of... Ooh, this one is a challenging one. I may... I may have to swing into the elevated camp as well, the 17 to 23. You know, I, I was thinking for a while the normal, and I could certainly see an argument for that, but we could see some tail vol towards the end of the year. We might see some negativity throughout next year, which drives up vol a little bit out there in terms of sell-off and actually some red on the screen. 
throughout the chunk of next year? Will it persist throughout the end of the year? That is the question. We could be at a 25 in November and a 13 by December, in which case all hope is lost. But that is the fun of this game. So I'm going to say the elevated bucket, and I'm going to say my level for the end of the year. I'm going to say I've been thinking high teens. I'm going to say 17... 1765. So not that far from where we close this year for our closing level for next year. You guys get your prognostications in. If you if you get this right, <laughs> you're going to win something awesome. Trust me. Nobody came close this year. But in the past years we had Neil and other you got he think he won it like twice. Some fun stuff was in the, in the offing for him. Meatball even sent him, I believe, a signed book. It was so it was so impressive what he was able to do. So we'll put all sorts of cool stuff. Maybe you'll even get one of our sweet, sweet pro trading crates, of which there are really only 12 that we give out to our secret club members out there. And those, trust me, are pretty cool and completely bespoke. Uh, but uh, So 1765 to end the year. And I'm already thinking about that one. <laughs> but uh, interesting. What do you guys think for next week? And for the end of the year, listeners, wow, a lot to unpack. A great first episode for the new year. Mr. Jim, a.k.a. the bronze medalist himself, thank you for joining us here today, sir. And before we go, folks want to get at you. When you're not appearing on the shows, where should they go? What should they do? Uh, The best place to find me is at Vixologist on Twitter. And uh, you can track me down, send me a message. And I will respond. Our chat is asking if they get a Lambo if they get it right. Well, not quite that level yet. We'll see. Maybe if we, we've had offers for Sheba Lambos. If Sheba hits those levels, yeah, I'll buy you a Lambo. How about that? <laughs> Non-binding, non-handshake agreement here on the network here. But, yes, uh, no Lambos, at least for the time being. Maybe like a die-cast Lambo figure. Maybe we can talk about that. We'll throw that in the box. That could be fun. All right, Mr. Rock Lobster, while you're busy trying to figure out how to get our live friends some Lambos, if folks want to go, they missed Tradosaurus. Can they get a recording of it? Um, If they missed Tradosaurus. Uh, If they want a recording of an all-day trading event, oh, my gosh, it is. I know you want to call it Tradosaurus because you like to – uh, you like to claim credit for all of because our, it is our awesome. Names. It's a great yeah. name. Why wouldn't you use it? Is the question. <laughs> uh, trade fest. Uh, you call uh, if you are not an Option Pit subscriber currently. Call Ted at eight 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 trade zero one. You can pop in for me. Uh, let's see. Mark is going to open the day. I'm the he hour and a half on the next hour and a half. Alicia will be the next hour and a half, then Bill, and then I will close the show with Frank, my compadre at Capital Gains. Um, so much option learning. So there'll be trades, uh, setting up trades, how to set up trades, how to um, divine volatility and how that might help you with uh, to create better trades. Uh, it'll be education, fun, and trade ideas. So... The price is right. It is free. It is our trade fest, and it is next Thursday. Sign up. Um, and if you have any questions, just send me a note at andrewadoptionpit.com, and I'll make sure you get a link. Oh, I thought it happened. I thought it was this Thursday. I thought it already happened. It's next Thursday? It's next Thursday. Oh, I thought you were doing trade of stories yesterday. That's why you weren't on the show. That's why we were making fun uh, of you no, so hard. No, I was doing actually a trade thing for Mark at uh, somewhere else. So we were. I was, I was busy. Uh, but next week, I, I think next week... I will be able to do the show because I will be done with uh, the trade, the Tradosaurus. Oh, so I lied. But Tradosaurus is upcoming, listeners. You can still get yes. access to Tradosaurus. Get get the Rock Lobster's closing of the show, song and dance number. I've seen it. It's impressive. Check it out. Optionpit.com. <laughs> Go to the link for Tradosaurus, and you you won't be you won't be sad <laughs> that you missed it. And of course, you know where to go to learn more about all things spikes. Myaxoptions.com. Slash spike should get all the data there, historical, current, get all the releases for when new stuff is happening. There's a lot of new stuff popping off. You can check it out there. You can probably find B spikes there. If not, you can always go to t3index.com, which is Simon's site, and find it there. And of course, on behalf of everybody who joined me today, everybody who joined us throughout the year of 2021, I want to thank you all. And we'll see you back here next week, another episode of Volatility Views. 
Volatility Views is brought to you by Myax, one of the fastest, most efficient trading platforms in the world. Myax is proud to bring you Spikes Volatility Products. Spikes options and futures are traded on the Spikes Volatility Index, Spike, offering pinpoint accuracy, radically faster dissemination, and a highly transparent settlement auction, all for ultra-low exchange fees. It's volatility reimagined. Learn more about spikes at myaxoptions.com slash spikes. Options and futures involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. The statements made are provided for informational purposes only and should not be relied on for financial or legal advice. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the optionsinsider.com. <laughs> 